What's up friends, this video will be talking about the world and lore of Candela Obscura so you can begin making your own games. If you want to learn how to play Candela Obscura, make sure to check out my previous videos where I go over the game mechanics and how to make a character. But let's get started. Over a decade ago, the world faced a sudden period of biting cold known as the Shiver. Since then, people of the world have been dealing with the after effects, including food shortages due to lowering crop yield each year. However, in the northern country of Hale, the shining beacon of hope is the Fairlands. Fortunately, with the Fairlands being settled between two valleys, this environment provides fertile land for them. Due to this, the Fairlands have recovered rather easily after the Shiver in contrast to the rest of the world. Unfortunately, this means neighboring countries have a reason to invade, which means that Fairlands are always in a state of defense or rest from the most recent attack. Which brings us to the other where. Hale and subsequently the Fairlands have had a peaceful relationship with another country across the glass sea, a country Halens refer to as otherware. However, that peace was broken in 1898 as this country brought their military to the Fairlands in hopes of capturing its resources. The war lasted six years, and towards the end of that time, Newfair had discovered something incredible and never before seen, electricity. This discovery allowed them to push back otherware with the wonderful technologies that they were able to create, bringing about a peace to the Fairlands once more. Though, with this groundbreaking discovery spreading across the world, Aelin's fear of war continues to rise once more. Now, within the Fairlands lies the city of Newfair. Set on the western coast of the continent of Hale, this is where you will find the streamed game of Candela Obscura and most of the information that we know at this time. Here in Newfair, refugees from the war have stayed, making this city their new home. Of course, with all the new cultures and ideologies, Newfair became a vibrant city filled with diversity and technology, similar to our early 1900s. But before we talk about Newfair, Let's talk about the city that lies below. Hidden beneath New Fair's foundation lies the ruins of an ancient civilization currently known as Old Fair. Over 2,000 years ago, this society was ruled over by emperors and empresses, and a council of powerful alchemists that would harness magic much like New Fair harnesses electricity. This town was built around a ziggurat, which housed many types of magical phenomena. However, Old Fair was ill-equipped to deal with the bleed that comes with these kind of phenomena, and with this long uncontained exposure to bleed, the people of Old Fair began to transform both mind and body. As Old Fair descended into chaos, it was finally destroyed after a nearby thinning, a weakened place in the barrier between this world and the beyond, was somehow torn asunder, leaving a giant chasm in the glass sea known as the Vast Chasm. This concussive event caused large waves to come crashing down on Old Fair, destroying all that they had built and wiping away their technology. However, those that delve into the Old Fair ruins today may still find magical phenomena, alchemical discoveries, and monsters reminiscent of the ancient world that refuse to be swept away. Now, this vast chasm tears through the glass sea, separating New Fair and Otherware. Water pours from the glass sea down into its depths, and near the edge of the chasm, the currents are like that of a storms. However, found deep within the chasm, we find a lighthouse. These lighthouses, made with magical astrolabes, were made by Candela Obscura as more and more thinnings were discovered. They were designed to hold back the deadly forces from beyond this realm, and they are infested with bleed. Though the majority of the populace don't fully understand the lighthouses' purpose, these structures serve the local folklore as warnings from danger. And for us, this creates wonderful story material. Maybe a group of young adults were dumb enough to travel to a lighthouse, and now your circle is tasked to travel there and help them. Now, let's talk about New Fair. New Fair is a fascinating and sprawling city of industry. It is filled with diverse people and a culture that cultivates innovation. And of course, with any large populated city, there are corrupt leaders in the government working to keep the rich rich and the poor poor. Those leaders are known as the Triumvirate. The Triumvirate is made up of three separate entities, the Ascendancy, the Primacy, and the Periphery. 
Taking directly from the Quick Start Guide, the Ascendancy is the official religion of the Fairlands. They are led by a person known as the Ascendant, who is appointed from within the Faith, and they have incredible influence. Like every aspect of the Triumvirate powers, the Ascendant is highly corrupt. The Primacy is the central government of the Fairlands, led by an elected official, the Premier. Members of the Chamber work beneath them to make decisions for the city of New Fair. Though the Primacy claims to be a distinct entity, they collaborate closely with the other facets of the Triumvirate. And finally, the Periphery, the police force within the Fairlands. In the wake of the last Great War, the Periphery inherited military technology that defies their supposed goal of interfacing peacefully with the Halen citizens. The captain of the Periphery is appointed by the Premier, thus they are seen by many Farrens as the violent hand of the government. New Fair is divided up into several districts, many of which are perfect places for your circle members to spend most of their time, or even for the GM to use for their stories. Again, following the Quick Start Guide, the Briar Green is a place that is… green. It has most of the town's parks, and this is where Briarbank College is located, making this district a perfect place for a professor character to live. This district is filled with beautiful gardens, flowering trees, and affluent houses. The Eaves is a district that was built just atop the Old Fair Ruins. This is the most exclusive district and the place where members of the Premier live. Fun fact, Anjali Bamani plays the character named Charlotte Eaves, who is from the Eaves family. Hollow Harbor is the port of New Fair, with the Stentorian River running through New Fair and into the Glass Sea. This makes Hollow Harbor an extremely important district where most of New Fair's wealth comes from. The Nine Irons is a relatively small district where the periphery headquarters, prison, and hanging grounds, the Gallowgate, are located. Also here is the East Streak Landfill, which is bordered by a small shanty town where those of low socioeconomic status tend to live. The Red Lamp District is the Vegas of New Fair. This district is the hub of legalized sex work and gambling. Artists and scientists also tend to flock here because of the affordable workspaces that they can also find. The Steel is the district that is filled with factories and functions as the industrial part of New Fair. Also hidden within this district is the Galvanica Engineering Works, a laboratory that is home to Eon's top mines and their experimental works. More on Eon's later. The Shrive Line district is the home of the Ascendancy Church and its clergy. This district is also filled with historical buildings, which makes it a popular tourist destination. The Seidel is basically the suburbs of New Fair, many residential neighborhoods and family operated shops. They also have electrical lights installed down all of their streets, which has given the Seidel the reputation of being very safe even at night. Additionally, the Grey Slate Santorium is located within this district. This asylum is often used by the Office of Unexplained Phenomena, the OUP, when someone has been subjected to too much bleed. The Silver Slip is a large district that holds the primacy. Nearby, of course, there are courthouses, law firms, and more wealthier businesses. The South Soffits is the district where most people of low socioeconomic status live. This district was built just underneath the Eaves district. The buildings here have been made from old Farian ruins and electrical wires run haphazardly throughout. Think Zon from Arcane. This place is where you would find blue collar workers and war refugees. And finally, the Varnish is the downtown district of New Fair. There are shops, bars, and restaurants here, and a network of cable cars that get you around, which makes it a perfect place for tourism as well. Surrounding New Fair and throughout the Fairlands, there are a few points of interest and landmarks that all Halens are familiar with. Starting with Seasway. Located to the north of New Fair, there is a fishing village. The buildings here have been built to sway in order to withstand the heavy winds from the glass sea. Most of the folk have lived here for generations, so newcomers are rare to these parts. Next, the farmlands located south of New Fair is a region called the Tottergrass. Here, farmers raise livestock and grow a variety of crops despite the shortages from around the world. With the importance of food, the Ascendancy has created a strong connection to this region, which is cause for concern for everyone. The high cliffs on the western edge of Hale is called the Verge, and when viewing this from New Fair, these cliffs appear to be the edge of the world, which is what gives it its name. Settled on the top of these cliffs stands a lone monolith, which is covered in ancient Halen writing and is a perfect quest starter. 
To the northeast of Newfair lies a forest made up of red flora. More importantly, the sap from the scarlet trees is a hallucinogen that is currently illegal in Newfair, which is the perfect setup for a very successful bootlegging industry. Maybe your circle was sent here because a few bootleggers had taken a new path through the woods and as a result had seen something they were never supposed to. Looming over the Scarlet Woods, the Brittleborn Mountains host several powerful bootleggers, and despite their attempts, the periphery can't seem to gain a foothold in these mountains. To the west of Newfair, Westrek is the place where Halens made their final stand against Otherware. This was the point in which electrical advancements had overpowered their enemy forces and drove them out of Hale. Though it is no longer an active battlefield, remnants of the war can be found here, including landmines. Travelers and explorers typically need to hire a guide in order to safely traverse Westrek. Now, let's talk about the organizations you and your circle members will most likely interact with during your investigations, starting, of course, with Candela Obscura. Candela Obscura is a secret society of investigators that aim to protect everyone from the dangerous supernatural forces of the beyond. They've been around since even before Old Fair, and during that time of Old Fair, as they were embracing the magical phenomena that was slowly corrupting them, Candela Obscura arrived in Old Fair and created a nearby chapter to keep an eye on it. And since the fall of Old Fair, Candela Obscura continued to expand their size and influence, and over the centuries leading up to the present, Candela Obscura have created lighthouses all across the Fairlands, deep within the Scarlet Woods, the peak of the Brittleborn Mountains, and most interestingly, the bottom of the vast chasm. These lighthouses were modeled after Candela Obscura's central lighthouse, the Pharos. It was a massive magical vault that contained a large variety of magical phenomena. However, much like Old Fair, the vault had fallen from the forces of powerful magics, which caused Candela Obscura to build another, then another. And by the time of the fall of the third Pharos, they had discovered how to use thinnings to access the flare, the barrier between the realms, and created the fourth Pharos within the flare. Here, the Pharos is only accessible through specific thinnings, which causes the organization to build chapters around these specific thinnings. The values of Candela Obscura are to protect the people and use their wealth of knowledge to focus their work on collecting and studying magical phenomena before they injure people, or worse, falling into the wrong hands. The atmosphere of Candela Obscura is that of libraries full of ancient and esoteric literature, working by candlelight, formal attire, strange artifacts in glass cases, secret entrances, and hidden passageways. Some of the key assets of Candela Obscura include the Fourth Pharos, the Chapter House Archives, which is a highly protected collection of books, artifacts, and records found in the secret meeting place of each circle, and the Light Keepers, who are the veteran investigators for the organization. These Light Keepers oversee circles and send them out on their assignments. And some notable figures within Candela Obscura include Shyla Baduri. They are a fearless adventurer and a Light Keeper. She is best known for her work in the Ruins of Old Fair. Naomi Malik is the conservator for the Fourth Pharos, which just means she leads the team that protects and controls the vault, which means that any request to access artifacts, information, or other resources from the Fourth Pharos goes through her. Robin Suarez is an investigator for Candela Obscura, however, they are currently in isolation within the Fourth Pharos because they had been exposed to an intense amount of bleed on their last investigation. And Xander Ikari, he's an art dealer that has intimate knowledge of the underground world of magical artifact trafficking, and he's helped Candela Obscura on many occasions. This next organization has rivaled with Candela Obscura due to its opportunistic viewpoints. The Exoteric Order of New Sciences was founded by a small faction of scientists and occultists, including the Dryden Twins, with a belief that the public world should incorporate science with magic. The values of eons is that old societies have failed mankind and that it is time for bold action. The overall atmosphere of eons is that of laboratories with beakers and brass, industrial spaces, upscale businesses, dense files, hastily scrawled notes, dangerous experimentations, electricity, and alchemical symbology. Some of the key assets of eons starts with the Devil's Well which is located under the glass sea, and was an attempt to create a vault styled after the Fourth Pharos. 
the Galvanica Engineering Works, which is located in the steel. This laboratory is the home of many Eons' top minds and their experimental works. And Adjuvant, which is Eons' experimental antidote for bleed, or rather an attempt to stop the negative human reaction to the natural phenomena of bleed. A few of Eon's most notable figures start with Elvira Dryden, who is the elder and business-minded twin that founded Eon's, Edric Dryden, who is the scientist that brings Elvira's dark ideas to life, Violet Boucher is the brilliant scientist who has just recently joined Eon's. She is eager to prove herself as a valuable asset and goes to extreme lengths to do so. And finally, Avery Choi. They are a clever and secretive figure who has been known to provide Candela Obscura with classified Eon's information. And the final organization to be aware of is the Office of Unexplained Phenomena, the OUP. This organization was actually seen in the first episode of Candela Obscura, and I'm sure it won't be the last. The OUP is the underfunded and undervalued division of the periphery that is omnipresent, yet invisible to the normal society. They specialize in the discovery, analysis, and suppression of magical phenomena. And as for its values, the OUP's main goal is to keep the knowledge of magical phenomena from the public, and going to great efforts to do so. They will sometimes collaborate with Candela Obscura, however, with being part of the periphery, those team-ups are usually a non-starter with all of the red tape and... It doesn't work. The atmosphere of the OUP is very much government buildings, sterile offices, redacted files, confidentiality, red tape, uniforms, manipulating the news, and filing away paperwork. Some of the key assets of the OUP is the Redeker Room, which is a place containing many magical phenomena unknown to the public, the Sathe device, which is a device that can be used to detect bleed on an object, place, or person, and the Grey Slate Santorium, which is an asylum located in the Seidel District, and is often used to hide away civilians and agents that were subjected to too much bleed. The main notable figures of the OUP include Baxter White, who is the longtime head of the OUP. He has a soft voice, a stern tone, and never suffers fools. Marcos Vega has been the secretary of the OUP for quite some time, which means that there are no secrets they don't know and no strings they cannot pull. Dr. Ida Ashraf, who is the physician for the Grey Slate Santorium, she seems to possess minor magical abilities and has little loyalty to the OUP. And finally, Farah Naftali, which is the close contact for Candela Obscura. She typically goes against the orders of the OUP and collaborates with the Circle members for the greater good. And that is pretty much all we know currently about the setting of Candela Obscura. Of course, I'm sure there will be more detailed information that will be coming out when the full book is released, and when that happens, I will be making more videos. So make sure to like this video, follow or subscribe to this channel, and let me know if there are any other videos you want to see in the comments. Thanks everyone.